for several reasons. Uh, we've already talked about the importance of looking at future expenses and needs for the town and how to properly plan for it. This is a common uh, process both in um, public sector and private sector. Now I know in a few weeks uh, several of you will be uh, taking your plaque and going home, but we wanted to do two things tonight. One is to help you celebrate some of the success that you've had while this sitting board and some of the projects you've accomplished and what has already been funded. The other thing we want to do is talk about other projects that we have out there that have not been funded that probably that the um, new board will have to weigh in on. And after the election, we want to try to get them oriented as soon as we can because we want to roll that into the next budget or certainly get moving as quickly as we can. And so the way we want to do this tonight is, oh, let me give you this disclaimer just to make sure it's real clear. Unless it's been voted and approved by the council, it's not an official act. It is more of a, these are the needs and these are the proposed funding areas that we're looking at. Now, as we go through, and this I'm speaking from 40 years of experience, what might be a need in year one, things could shift over in year two, three, or four. So it's not unusual that city councils once a year looks at their CIP and makes adjustments accordingly. In some cases, the scope of what they're doing may expand or contract. It's just a way to try to, again, plan the future use of your needs and money and make sure they're properly coordinated. Um, you have before you a spreadsheet where we have identified the various projects. Now, just reading over, it is a five-year plan uh, a lot of these projects are familiar with you. You see where it says uh, yes next to the last column. That means that it has been funded and there's no further action needed by the council. We also tied it into things that you said were important. If you remember last spring, one of the things you talked about was roads and infrastructure. So we tried to align all of those. So what I want to do at this point is I want to step aside and let the staff members that are responsible for the uh, being involved with these various projects just quickly walk through the project, try to answer any questions you might have. And um, once we go through that, if there's no more questions, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, we'll go ahead and stand adjourned until 6.30, if that works. Yes, sir. And I think our first presenter is Old Monroe Road Improvement Project. And Todd, I think you're handling that. Is that correct? I was going to go first. Oh, Jim? I stand corrected. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Mike. Good evening. So basically, all I'm just going to say briefly that every one of these projects you'll be reviewing tonight has been addressed for funding. And even the projects you have not yet approved yet, we have identified a reasonable funding source. Of course, that may change based, uh, for example, the uh, American Rescue Plan Act monies. Um, we've identified some of that that may fit. We're not sure yet. We're still waiting to get clearance from the uh, Treasury Department. But we want to know that they all have an address for funding. And I want to say that, Mike. Um, without further ado, I think I'm going to turn it over to Todd. Yeah, I'm just going to go over these very quick. Um, if y'all have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, just most of these, obviously, you know, uh, but I'll just give you a brief breakdown. Over the road, um, as of last communication from DOT, the construction let date is for 2024. Um, I've had, uh, just so y'all know, I've had several property owners call uh, my office to uh, discuss some of the conversations they've been having with the right-of-way group which is what the company has called. Um, and so they are actually doing uh, discussions at this time. So as far as I know, that's uh, moving forward. Um, you know, annual resurfacing project. Uh, obviously, we do this annually every year. Uh, we do have a brand new pavement condition survey that was, I just got the uh, final um, product uh, last week. 
uh, it's not been finalized in a report, but I got to be able to at least look at it. So we're going to make recommendations in the near future for these, the next spring resurfacing contract based on that new criteria. Um, but obviously we've uh, earmarked, you know, around 1.2 million every year. Um, I don't see that changing at any uh, at, at next few years, just for the simple fact that these ratings that have came back have been lower than what we previously had because it's been since 2000. Um, 15 since we did the last pavement condition survey. So um, we do work in pay, pavement preservation as well in these contracts. So it's not that we're just going in there and having to uh, uh, rebuild new ro uh, old roads to new roads. We do go back to our existing roads. We do from the previous resurfacing contracts and make sure we keep those uh, existing pavements uh, life cycle uh, updated as best we can. Shady Bluff. As you recall, um, previous council meetings, I've discussed this project. Uh, one major reason why this project is being uh, uh, designed is the fact that this road is basically a substandard road. It barely meets the uh, width uh, criteria of a, uh, a Powell Bill funded roadway. Um, we've actually had to put signs out there for no trucks allowed due to that uh, width restrictions. And so um, it's obviously another access point for the park uh, for events. I'm sure Hayden can uh, attest to that. So we are planning to widen the road to two 11-foot lanes, um, curb and gutter on both sides, and put one 8-foot wide sidewalk on the uh, east side of the project. Uh, you'll see sort of the layout. Uh, I don't know if you can see that picture very well in your packets, but we tried to show and convey what the apartments our building for that intersection uh, with the parking, on street parking, all that. That is not our project. We are tying into that uh, intersection with our project. So all that infrastructure you see up on top of the existing uh, roadways in the corner of that picture is the apartment's construction. Um, again, we, we uh, like to do the right of way probably next spring to summer and hopefully uh, let this in 2022. Any questions about this project? Yeah, on the uh, Indian Trail Complete Street, I know we got some preliminary drafts we looked at. Do you know when we're going to be able to decide on a final draft on that? Yes, uh, we have some uh, right away uh, discussions we need to have with the, uh, the council, and so we're trying to schedule that for possibly next council meeting. Okay. So you'll you'll see a, a draft layout of that project then. Any any questions on the Shady Bluff uh, improvement? You have one? Uh, yeah. And I, I can just on a while you're on here was uh, road improvements, and I know we get power bill money, and I saw it somewhere in a media outlet. Did we get eight hundred and sixty thousand on power bill money? Was that an accurate figure? Yes, yeah, eight hundred forty six thousand. Is that pretty? Is that That's pretty standard. My, Last year was one eight it was eight fifty three, if I recall. I was, I was just wondering if the media had it right. I saw that and I said, you know, and I don't remember where I saw it here, but that that's an accurate figure. That's close, right? Eight forty six. Yeah. Okay. Sort of. All right. I'm done. Thanks. Good, Mr. Corn. <laughs> David, any questions on the shady buff, Mike? Yeah. Um, I do have a question. Um, it's five sixty, and then. From the stormwater, basically because curb and gutter, that type of thing, it'll be two hundred and forty thousand, right? So that makes uh, yes. the total project cost eight hundred. Yes, uh, the, the, there's a culvert. There's a culvert down there that's uh, substandard, and it's in the floodplain. That actually, that road does cross the floodplain. So there's a, there's going to be a, a, an significant upgrade from sizing from that existing culvert. So that's the reason why the stormwater funds needs to be used. All right, and then another question is, based on the cost, and I know, you know, Jim will confirm whether we can afford this or not, um, and I know that the stormwater chairman is here, which is good. Um, is that not a project that we can move up from a funding approval standpoint in this year, this current year, 2021, versus, and that goes back to the manager's point where he mentioned um, starting off, we can have a five-year plan, but we can move things up or down depending on, you know, funding, uh, funds availability, that sort of thing. So, 
Is that something that we could possibly do? I know that you have design engineering right away and all those things, but is that something that we can do that could get that project moving, or do you want to wait till two twenty on until twenty twenty? No, sorry. Yeah, the, the goal the goal would be to um, once we get full design, we'll be able to um, uh, estimate right away acquisition uh, and the design and the basically uh, construction cost. And once we have that in place, then we would come to the council to. Uh, to try to vote to proceed with that type of project. So you, your suggestion is to leave it as proposed 2023 for now? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the scheduled date to proceed, but uh, as far as going, going through the process of approving to move forward once we get the design completed, because we have been approved to move forward with that part of the project, we would come to y'all for right-of-way construction to uh, establish some kind of ordinance. Yeah, I'm just looking at it from an improvement standpoint, traffic in and out of the park and so forth. And I consider it to be low-hanging fruit, right? Not $10 million, that type of thing. That's why I'm kind of suggesting that in terms of, that's just my desire. The rest of the council can speak for themselves, but I was just talking about from my point of view. But thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't have any more questions on, on Shady Bluff. Oh, Mr. Bob. Oh, are we talking stormwater now or are you going to come to that later? Later. Okay. Yeah. And... Uh, since we're back on um, the IT Complete Street, I've noticed coming down uh, South Fork, they're putting in a looks like bigger water line, and you got the flags. It looks like it's going from the railroad track all the way down to uh, South Fork. Now that's going to be evidently getting ready to put in the water lines. That correct? Yeah. Right now the sewers, there's a sewer project on South Fork. That's a sewer. Okay. Where they're taking a, a pump station offline that's on Dees Court. Which is that small cul-de-sac on the right, going this way? Uh, there's a small pump station there that they got to get offline, so they're putting gravity sewer in. So once that's done, it's kind of a weird, perfect timing. By the time that gets done, then they're going to be out there uh, surveying. Will start for the center line of the water main next week, and so you'll start seeing that center line staking along South Fork all the way to downtown. And that's going to go all the way down on one road, right? Because I didn't see Yeah, exactly. They'll there. connect to the 8-inch main on Omer Road with the 12-inch, and then they'll run the 12-inch all the way to Liberty Lane and connect to the existing 6-inch. So they're setting that in two projects, uh, it, Well, Yeah, well, it's, the water main is one project. Uh, it's two separate when you consider the 12-inch main is one project, and then the internal uh, town center sewer and water is a sec secondary project, which they would be building as well. It's a little like that only like surveyed half of it, so that's why I asked. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so uh, now we're at the uh, Indian Trail Complete Street project. Again, we are moving forward. We had preliminary uh, comments back from uh, DOT on the 25% plans, uh, my, very minor comments, so we are, we're moving forward with that uh, with the anticipated uh, construction let day of 2023 of March. Um, uh, Y'all are very aware of this project. Uh, if you got any other questions, I'll be at the happy and answer them. I have, I have a question. But I want to see if anybody else has any. No, no only you. Did we ever consider um, for that project? I like the project, the idea, going from Old Monroe all the way up. Is that something that we could? And I know this is kind of secondary but yeah is that something that um should be considered you think in terms of the possible improvements that would make there that would help make that area a little more walkable in, in, especially the other neighborhoods not too far from there well in my opinion if we the active discussions with duke energy to see what is the possibility with the existing infrastructure they have along that roadway if it's a way to improve that they're going to improve it all the way between Old Monroe and 74, they're not going to do halfway. Uh, if we're going to do all that and, and pay for that infrastructure, I think it's it's a it's a need for a town to go ahead and look at that as well. Okay, so I I concur um, okay. because I think it would make sense, right? I think um, so, and but that's just my opinion. Present value versus future value, that type of thing. Spend the money once now versus later. Yeah. Um, in this case, Mr. McLaurin. While we've voted and approved to move forward with this particular project, and Karen, that goes for you too, how do we approach it? And I'm asking only for myself, the rest of council will kind of ask that question too, but how do we approach it where we can ask engineering to kind of take a look at that from a cost standpoint of 
the project going from Old Monroe all the way up? I think we would have some discussions with Todd as to what kind of resources he feels like he needs to do engineering. The other thing he mentioned I think was really important was what is Duke going to do as far as the utility upgrade? Right. We would probably need to make this, and correct me if I'm wrong, Todd, a separate but parallel project right. because of the funding source that we have. Um, but if the board, and, and I, I think if you looked at the whole thing, it would give you more opportunities than just the two or three blocks. But agreed, would, agreed. But okay. my question is, um, I'm asking for me. The council would yeah. have to make that, have yeah. that discussion. But is that something that you'll come back with, present it to us and ask? Or And I don't want to be speaking for anybody, right? Everybody here yep. do, does have an opinion. but. If we're looking at this and we're investing already to bring to get that point, it, can we also look at the other points? And it's contingent on Duke's um, what Duke does to um, remedy the, the the infrastructure that they have there. But let's say, for instance, Duke really does something good all the way to the end. If that is something that we can look at, if, if the board is interested, we could present. I mean, it won't be at the next meeting or the following meeting. We'll follow under the new board, uh, a grand scheme as to what it would look like for the whole whole situation from 74 to Old Monroe Road. So I'm just nodding of heads or, I know this is gonna fall under the new board, but. I'm fine with that. Um, you know, I, I actually concur with, with uh, Marcus here because when we were looking at putting numbers behind the projects of what we want yep. to see first, that was one of the ones I, I had talked about was that while we're doing this, let's go ahead and finish it out. It makes, to me, and, it makes sense. And, and there's, there's some issues with the new hospital as to when they've got to do their part. Right. So what will be really important is, even if you make them separate projects, you try to run it parallel, you know, hopefully with the same general contractor so that once they're on the job site once, they don't have to come back. So. But again, that will be a board decision as to whether y'all choose to move forward or not. So do you guys want them to provide that information or you think it's a futile effort? David, Todd, Mayor. They should provide the information, but have the time they need to get it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I when, by all means. Yeah, whenever, yeah. They, whenever yeah. yeah. I mean, most likely yeah. it'll be the new council kind of I taking mean, to that information. I mean, finish up the project only yep. makes sense, right? Right. Yep. Yep. And to know what we're dealing with from today's standpoint, and I'm pretty sure you can loosely project inflation rates? Yes, sir. So, yes, By Todd, means. I guess the answer is yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. All right, next project is our uh, it's called, uh, EB 5723. It's the uh, Highway 74 multi-use path, uh, South Fort Greenway. Uh, we are at 65% plans. Um, uh, being reviewed right now, and so we're getting close to start looking at um, uh, negotiating easements and so forth for this project. Um, not, no really hiccups here. Uh, you know, uh, again, just to summarize, we're filling the gaps in along 74 with a 10 foot concrete multi use path, and then if you see on the map, the green section is where the new greenway will be. The blue section is the old greenway that we will upgrade. Uh, that was a pro uh, uh, done by a private entity that the town took over as far as maintenance is concerned. The orange is already existing sidewalk that obviously we'll connect to. Um, and so uh, the new greenway will be asphalt, 10 foot wide asphalt pavement. Um, again, hoping to start this project uh, construction wise next year. Any questions? All right, next, Chestnut Parkway Phase 3 uh, in right-of-way acquisition right now. Uh, as you'll see in the estimated schedule, I put a caveat in there for construction late day of April 2022 and or determined by council, and that is due to the fact that this NCDOT Phase 2 Parkway extension will probably be slightly delayed. Uh, they'll be probably started construction, but by the time we get done with this project, if we go based on our schedule, will be done before they are done. So it's it's upon the council to probably make a determination, do we hold off and delay the construction part 
in the future or not. So the new council will come back and make that decision in the spring of next year. Uh, any questions about this project? Before we move on to that, I just want to remind the board that with the Chestnut Parkway being built out here and Wesley Chapel Stout Road that the state is doing, we're getting Indian Trail Road, but it will also give motorists two ways to go across town without going through Indian Trail Road. We should relieve some of the traffic and create a more walkable um, Indian Trail Road. Um, next is a, a something me and Adam had been discussed several, for several years now is trying to get some kind of a connectivity type, small type projects in place um, for the next several years. Um, it's kind of been on the docket, but it's kind of been just kicked down the curb and we'd like to seriously think about uh, starting to look at that. There, there are some potential projects on there uh, we listed, but there are several others that we, we've got in mind that obviously we would bring uh, forward at a later date, but we just threw in a you know 100,000 a year to, as an annual budgetary number. It could be more or less uh, each year, um, but you know again we we feel it's a it's a good pro program to start. Any questions on this? Um, I do have a question, sir. Todd, do you want to go, or you have one? Todd. Did you have a question? Todd, did you have a question? No, this this hasn't been approved yet, right? No, no, this is not. No, uh, anything that's not stamped approved by. On each of the sheets, I probably should have said that earlier, but you'll see a stamp says approved by council. If it doesn't say that, then it's not. So, we have yeah. a lot of people in Brandon Oaks asking for bike paths. Mm. <laughs> been off the hook. Uh, no, no, actually, this is kind of that has been on the docket for a while under uh, actually a CRTPO project, and it just never has been approved. Uh, so, <clears throat> again, th there is actually some additional funding that could be utilized for that. So uh, the reason I was asking if he had a question is that I have one. Is it possible for us to also consider some of the other neighborhoods too? Because a lot of, in the trail is a lot of neighborhoods, right? And, and that's kind of how our town is built. And the connectivity from sidewalk, some of them, some of the neighborhoods, um, depending on their proximity to the major street there, they build sidewalks along it. I live over in Annandale, so Annandale, Bonterra, these two connected Fieldstone Farm as well. But for instance, uh, you and I spoke about this, Porteridge um, High School, Porteridge Elementary, Porteridge Middle, along that road there. I think that's what um, Price Road is one of the roads there. That is, is there a way that we can look at that, include those that we when we're at C CRTPO, we can advocate for some of these? Because I see some of the other towns having some of these projects, whether it's connectivity, sidewalks, and so forth, being approved. And I'd love to be able to you know, have some of those state dollars come to Indian Trail from a sidewalk standpoint. Um, I know that from Walmart all the way out to um, uh, the roundabout by uh, Sardis Elementary, there's sidewalks there as well, which is you know pretty good. So if we if that's possible, how do we go about doing that? Do we do I just send you an email saying, hey, can we consider that? That way, when we go to the CRTP or meeting, I can you know advocate and bring that up as an item when they ask for you know um, call for projects. Yeah. The, uh it obviously has to meet certain criteria or it's obviously not going to get ranked high. And so a school is obviously uh, beneficial as far as that criteria is concerned. Uh, sometimes they do want you to perform a pedestrian study um, and have actually somebody go out there and do counts of people that actually walk across the road that's unsafe. Uh, stuff like that would have to be looked at. And, you know, if that criteria is not met through the application process, then it basically just get kick, it gets kicked out. So we'd have to make sure it... It, it, it does have some qualifications before we go through that process. All right, thank you. All right, that's all the transportation projects. Uh, I'm gonna turn it to Adam to talk about the facilities. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Um, so we're just going to talk about really it's just two projects right now that we're going to look at for um, like facilities wise. One of those is a public works facility. So as we continue to take over more streets, more sidewalks, more um, everything else that we're taking over right now, 
Um, and just as the town continues to grow, our need for space continues to grow. So we've done some preliminary looking. We've looked at about 10 other municipalities. Of those 10, average is about eight and a half acres of land and building wise is about 19,000 square feet. So that's, you know, that's the reason why we've always kind of said 10 acres and about 20,000 square feet. That's because we're, we're looking in that ballpark. And when you compare us to other municipalities, we kind of hit an odd place in the middle where you have a lot that are smaller than us and then you have ones that are really bigger than us. So we don't compare ourselves to Concord. It, the comparison's not there. But we're bigger than Matthews or Mint Hill and places like that. So you're, you're kind of in a middle ballpark when you try and make those comparisons. So as we go further through this process, if as council wanted to, kind of how Todd was talking about, we would do more research and maybe bring in a, a design company that could kind of start helping us tweak those numbers a little bit more, get those numbers a little bit tighter as we started looking for properties and things like that. Any questions on this one? one I guess one other thing I probably should say is right now we have equipment that we don't lock up. So we have me like mechanical items on a truck that we don't put inside of a gate because we don't have the ability to do that. The guys don't have showers. They don't have lockers. They don't have, you know, heat and air. Like the shop you see that's built there, they built it by hand. So, we're, it, yes, it's a significant upgrade, but it, it's something that's needed at some point. The next item you'd see is a facilities fund. So that would not just be for town hall, but that's the picture that we chose to use for this one, is this fund would be, we would gradually, over a couple of years, create basically a, a savings account for facility items. That would be for if the HVAC went out in this building. That would be if we needed to do an upgrade to a park, you know, inside, we need to redo the, the bathroom at a park. Um, it would give us that ability to have a savings account to go dip into. We would do that work and then replenish that account as time went forward. So it just gives us somewhere to be able to go and pull some of those funds from. Any questions on either one of these? Yes, sir. Right. This little building six and a half million dollars. No. A nice building, Wendy. That's why it says, that's why there's a little I mean, I footnote. If I for six and a half million, I wouldn't have used this little building, but anyway. Well, I, we didn't have a picture of what we would want, you know what I mean? I mean, I can throw or things. Or flagpole. Yeah. I can throw pictures out there of facilities, but we didn't want to, like, show something that is something that's either way more than, than that or way lower. So, yes, that is the facility that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. That's the facility that they operate out of right now. You're saying eight and a half on some of these other acres and 19,000 square. Do you have a projection of what would be practical for Indian Trail out of that? So again, I'll go back to what we, we've we kind of always said is we'd like to be at about that 10 acres of land that gives us room to grow. We wouldn't develop the whole 10 acres to start with, but that gives you room to grow as you need to. And we would probably be somewhere in that 20,000-ish square foot of space. Now, what that is, is that gives you office space, but that also gives you space for a shop. So right now, our guys, if they have to change the oil on a lawnmower or if they have to do something like that, they literally do it on the gravel parking lot. Like, they don't have a lift to put it on. They don't have anything to be able to do any of that type work. So we have to just make do with what we have. Mm -hmm. I want a Corvette, but I drive a Mazda. <laughs> right. But, um, the, so that's why I was looking, uh, you know, so, in a practical world. Right. I'm, I'm at. But thank you. Anything would be better than what they have right now to operate out of. Anything. All of the above. Okay. <laughs> Anything would be better than what they have today, but we have to think about the future and how we want to plan for it if we don't we don't want to build something that in two years we've outgrown and need something My different. Kevin got a building for sale behind his house. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't six and a half million. Right. And ten acres. If it's anything. Yep. So, yep. Marcus, go ahead. Um so two questions. One, the facilities fund. Mm -hmm. Um Jim, is that something that we can afford during our budget? Our, our current budget? Yeah, that's the plan. 
So, I mean, if it's something that we have to put aside, right, we're going to save some money from that specific fund in the event HVAC or anything breaks down. Um, why, when can you bring that before the council, this one, the next one, which, whichever one you choose to be able to approve that item? And again, trying to look at low-hanging fruit, right? Things that we could possibly, you know, target. And this is one of them that I, I see no reason why we shouldn't because we're not just spending the money, we're putting it aside in the event something does and will break. I, I think if it's the will of the council, Jim, I think we could bring, bring it to the next meeting perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one. You know, if, if the council wants to do that. Mr. Cohen said it best. He said, let's yeah. get it done. Let's get something done. <laughs> Trying to yeah. make sure I, I live up to his words, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's just moving a line. <clears throat> it's just moving a line item, right? All right. Moving a line item. Yeah. So that's yeah. one. Second question, Jim, again to you. You mentioned earlier that there is funding sources. You've identif identified funding sources. I'm looking at the public works facility. Adam, I understand your premise, which is let's acquire enough so that if we do need to expand, we have the ability to. We wouldn't build anything, but everything, but we have the ability to as a town does and will grow. Yeah. But the other, th and we take over streets and so forth. But the other question I have is the 1.5 I'm assuming is probably for property acquisition, that type of thing. That's correct. And then 2.5 would be to build out. The yeah. question, Jim, is that you mentioned um, funding sources. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it appropriate now? And I'm watching Karen while I ask this to sh say that you have this set up, that you can share it with us, that type of thing. Just very preliminarily, I put down like um, we discussed it. Uh, partially, we do a new bond for that, Marcus. Okay. Um, use some, you know, we have quite a bit of fund balance, so it's still early on, but we can come up with a strategy. But bonding would certainly be part of the 6.5 at this point, I would imagine. Okay. Okay. Those were the two questions I had. Thank you for the answer. Those were the two questions I had, Mr. Mayor. Anybody else? Nope. All right. I'm out of here. Hayden's coming up. You going home? No, I'm no. just walking back to my seat. Now, we're not going to let him out that easy, Mr. Mayor. While, while Hayden is coming up to talk about the parks. How too late, Hayden. Thanks. Too late. There he is. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. I, I just, I just want to remind the board that we do have land design on the ground looking at what opportunities are available both across the street and over at Crooked Creek. They should have some schematics, I think, within the next 10 days or something like that. So when you look at the sheet that's before you, we understand and we have told, we've been very clear with land design that we are interested in soccer fields, pickleball court, fishing ponds, and, and I think the other things that you've mentioned, and additional parking. Because any kind of development across the street is going to require additional parking. So when you look at this sheet and you don't see soccer fields listed, don't, don't get alarmed. It's, it's there. These are just some, uh, some various amenities that we've also, you may want to consider. My presentation just got a lot shorter. <laughs> so uh, as Mike mentioned, we, we have engaged with Land Design. We kicked off uh, the contract with them last Tuesday with, it, with the conversation. Uh, it is, like Mike said, uh, a two-part contract. The first is to look across the street at Chestnut uh, and Crooked. Obviously, we have bond dollars that are tied there that, that we have the ability to, to spend. That is the funding source. Uh, the second part of the, the contract is to look at land that the town owns and potentially what could or should go there. So they are taking council feedback, uh, both from you know conversations that you've had internally with staff, as well as what you shared during the master plan process. Uh, they're taking staff feedback and also looking at that uh, recently adopted master plan. So when they're going through those, uh, as Mike said, we're, we're looking at fields and courts and ponds and things like that uh you know mayor pro tem you you pointed out parking so if we were to add something at either one of the parks um obviously it's going to be popular whatever it is uh so parking needs to be considered uh parking is one of those things that is expensive it's not as glamorous as a field it's not as glamorous as a splash pad or a dog park or a tennis court but it is one of those necessary items so that when people come to recreate that, that it is there so uh, looking specifically at Chestnut Square Park, um, we will share the renderings that we receive. Uh, again, 
hopefully the next 10 to 14 days out with council, uh, get some of your feedback, and then have the ability to, to tweak that if, if necessary. Uh, some of the other things that, that we have presented and talked about in the past, uh, you see listed there in the, in the potential project. So again, community gardens, uh, connectivity, talking about uh, you know, a sidewalk connecting Chestnut Parkway to the field, uh, also Nelson Lemon to the field. Again, as Todd mentioned, we're, we're acquiring a lot of parking with the, with the Gray Star community back there. Uh, and if we continue to, to knock it out of the park with events and rentals and things of that nature, we want to make, make it easy for people to, to access the amenities, uh, not jump the fence, not get hurt, not anything of that nature. Um, any specific questions at Chestnut Square Park? Perfect. So again, all of these are potentials. These have not been voted on. These have not been decided. They haven't been, you know, sourced out for materials or anything of that nature. Um, so again, what what you see here are are complete potential items. They did. So uh, the, the, the town had six community garden plots uh, that was part of the Navajo um, property of Cultural Arts Center, you know, uh, Civic Building, and then Old Sheriff's Office. Obviously, when those were sold, they no longer are able to be utilized by the town. So again, looking at, at Crooked, uh, again, just as a reminder, Land Design is looking at this park as well. Uh, again, this is part of the, the $1.8 million that we have through our bond. Uh, everything that you see there has been presented or talked about it in some form or capacity. Uh, so everything from you know a pump track to you know paving of the parking lot to additional uh, parking to walking trails and, and scoreboards and things of that nature. Uh, I think we can all agree that the parks are relatively new, um, but they are very popular. So when when people think Indian Trail, it's one of the things that they they think of is the pristine parks. Um, while we have maintained the parks, we have not put a lot of emphasis in in the upkeep. Meaning, yes, we are cutting the grass we're cleaning the bathrooms um, but when you're seeing 200,000 plus people at the park things get worn down things get vandalized sidewalks crack uh, so again one of the things that we're looking to do uh, is continue to maintain the parks um, it's a lot easier to maintain something currently as it goes along than to ignore it and then suddenly you have a park that no one visits uh, any questions specifically with, with Crooked Creek Park you got Miracle Field down there a, a, a potential item that, that has been discussed. I mean, we didn't have a, it wasn't big enough to put a miracle field there before. So, I mean. Yep. Yeah. So uh, part of, uh, again, not to, not to hash up, you know, old things we, we had engaged with the, with, you know, a gentleman and looking at miracle um, part of the things that, that, you know, they were, they were seeking was an actual miracle field name. You know, that is a brand name, if you will. Uh, we could, again, potential ability, uh, put in a, a, an ABA field. It would not have a miracle name to it. Uh, again, that's, you know, if we build something generically, still has the same accessibility, single, still same function, just doesn't have that miracle name to it. Um, you know, that side of Crooked that you see in the picture uh, is very ADA friendly, uh, meaning the all-inclusive playground, uh, some of the projects that you approved previously at the end of last fiscal year, um, you know, the story walk, uh, the, the vaulted bathroom, the shelter. Uh, so again, if we want that to kind of be a, an ADA hub, uh, not only for us, but all of Union County, that is a potential. Uh, again, it is not something that is voted on yet. Um, and, and if that's not the appetite of the council, we, we scratch it off and look towards something else. I may on the, on the miracle field. Uh, Mike had me call Raleigh for the uh, for the American Recovery Act money, and it's about halfway there. That's halfway there. Um, I'm still waiting for guidance, but for somebody for you know for that part of the population, it's a possibility. So I just want to mention that. Well, the people here approached the Lions Club about the miracle field years ago, and. Actually, the reason they approached the uh, Lions Club was they needed people to play on the field. You have to have a league. Um, there used to be a blind beatball league and some other things, but th th those leagues folded. So, you know, when you start talking about something like that, you kind of got to have people that are going to play on it 
before you build the field. I mean, you know, you got to have a league, and you, so and usually if the town or so doesn't have league ball, you know, then you got to reach out to the athletic associations or different people here or a YMCA. We don't have a YMCA. It's the closest one's over at Siski. So, you know, that was kind of the problem I think before was, you know, is trying to gather up an interest of who would play on it. Mm -hmm. So that that's was, you know, one of the issues that when they came to the Lions Club, because they actually, you know, the guy came to us and he's like, y'all know anybody could play on it? And uh, at that time we were sponsoring a beatball team, but that, that league folded. So um, I, I don't know, that's just kind of something to think about if you're looking into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great suggestions. Uh, you know, taking just a brief opportunity to, to kind of update you on where some of those park projects stand that, that were approved at the end of last fiscal year. Uh, the lightning detection equipment is out at the park. Uh, if you go out there and there happens to be lightning within eight miles, you will think that we're being hit by Cold War Russia and Cuba. <laughs> it is the loudest siren that you've ever heard, so it definitely does its job. Um, the story walk was received uh, last week. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, so that is going to be put together during some of the rainy days and then hopefully installed uh, by the end of the year. Um, we are in conversations with Union County about the vaulted bathroom. Uh, that project will have to take place first, uh, and then the shelter will be installed just by disrupting the ground and concrete work and things of that nature. Uh, the shelter has already been designed, ready to go. Um, you know, it's just waiting on that other project, uh, and then hopefully we'll have a, an update here shortly for the disc golf outfit. Uh, it's just a matter of walking the course and then scheduling, hopefully, time for the concrete company to come out and pour. Moving along, uh, part of what you see and part of what was established in the master plan was, again, looking at parkland that, that the town currently owns and potentially developing. So again, the rendering you see here on your screen and, the, and that's in your book uh, is coming from 2017. If you remember, the town applied for a part of grant. It was not awarded the grant back in 2017. Um, again, just a rendering, just a capture of what we were looking at at the time. Uh, so this is not saying that this is what it would look like today. Some things may be the same, th some things may be differently. Um, but again, looking at the CIP plan, looking at you know potentially developing uh, Mayor Pro Tem, your words, low-hanging fruit, it's there. It's in a very popular area of Sun Valley. It's connected to a neighborhood. Um, so giving, some, giving folks the ability to recreate where they are. Any questions in regard to Holly Park? It's an acre, right, we're talking about? That's the roughly? Right. Yes, yes. All right. Is it possible, I don't, I can't remember what was, well, I wasn't here in 2017, but I can't remember what was proposed, but is it possible for this, and I like the fact that you use the low-hanging fruit analogy here, but is it possible for you to come back with something that caters more or less along the lines of senior citizens, grandparents, and younger kids in the, because this is a, a populated area, some, a lot of grandparents do move back to these areas to be closer to their grandkids. Sometimes they keep them during the day um, when their, their children are at work. Um, and also they come to visit as well, but it is somewhere, it's something that is close where they don't have to drive to Chestnut or to Crooked Creek. It's, and we have a lot of people who live over there, so it's something, um, and I'm, again, I speak only for myself, the rest of the council can speak for themselves, but it's something that I would like to look at because the thing is we have residents over there who are very much a, a part of Indian Trail as any, any other place in town, and I'd like to see if we could possibly come up with some design or some amenities there to serve both older and the younger person. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's that's a, a, a great comment. Uh, when we are working with land design, I think that's exactly why we've engaged with them, uh, for for them to to come up with that that concept. Uh, so we'll definitely push push across that idea to them. Any other questions? Yep, I'm sorry. Um, this is not necessarily on um, what we're talking about today, but one quick comment. I was. Um, my wife and I went to the two concerts prior to the last one um, across the street, mm -hmm. um, and the holiday band um, was um, was excellent. But what I saw there, and just a, a comment, was that you know they were kind of older; they were a little more towards my wife and I's age, and they were sweating. Mm -hmm. Is there? And I don't think it has to be a grand something grand, but something either. 
um, move the the concert back an hour because when I was looking at it as it uh, went down, the, the also they got the shade or some sort of pavilion or even just a um, something that goes in front to keep the the heat off of them. Yeah, definitely something that, that, that we... They, I mean, they, they didn't stop. They, they were actually... <laughs> That's what that paycheck's for, right? Yeah. Um, so a, a great, great, you know, observation there. So when we first hosted concerts, we were having concerts April through September. Um, and then what we realized was just that. When it's hot as blazes out, uh, it's a struggle on performers, and it's a struggle for just general citizens to sit there and just sweat, even though they're not doing anything. So that's why we've kind of separated that uh, spring and fall concert series. Um, we have toyed around with the idea of, of switching a time frame uh, from our initial surveys, again, a couple of years ago, uh, what folks shared with us is, I don't mind coming out and getting there after I, you know, I can come right from work right there, but if I go home and I sit down on my couch, that couch is real comfortable for the rest of the night. Uh, but again, so, something we can definitely take a look at. Okay, okay. Hayden, <clears throat> we're getting close to meeting time, so I'd like to give them five minutes before the meeting. Is Absolutely. There anything else you need to wrap up? Uh, just one last thing at Crossing Pass Park will take 30 seconds. Uh, it's been identified. You know, this is the town's first park. Uh, you know, it's it's aging a little. I think there are some things again. Uh, Council Member Head, you know, mentioned for for concerts that that could make it a little more appealing for live entertainment there. Uh, so that's one of the things that we will be exploring and looking at. So that that's all I have. A uh, question? Yes, sir. On Crossing Pass Park upgrade, is have you ever thought about maybe taking the sides there and enclosing them in? So that it would actually would be better for when it rained. We we've definitely looked and thought of that. You know, again, I think all opportunities and options are on, on the table. What what I would say we, when it rains, if there, you know, if we had a scheduled concert, uh, we would probably cancel the concert because while the band is nice and dry, you and your wife are are, are nice and nice and getting rained on. So. Spring shower, summer showers, nothing. I mean, yeah. you don't count for the whole event because yeah. of that. But you know, if you got equipment and everything, and you're a band member, I, I was just thinking if the sides were enclosed, it might be better for the people up yeah. there not to have to scramble trying to keep their equipment. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, you know, but, you know, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I definitely appreciate it. Any other questions? I, I do know that we have a couple more slides, Mr. Mayor. That's your prerogative if you would like yeah, to entertain let's, those. Let's continue this and. Um, another time so they can stretch and we're not delaying the meeting. That, that's fair enough. But what I would suggest uh, to Todd's question is right now no specific idea has been presented. We're just simply wanting to reserve the money. And the other slides are pretty much self-explanatory. I would guess if there's any questions we could, you know, hear from the board individually. The last thing I'll mention to you is your last slide just talks about our flood maintenance map and what years we do that. So. Um, I think we're good wrapping up, and if y'all want to hear the last three or four at another point, we'll do that. Right. Let's just call it five minutes. Just five minutes. It's 25 after. Everyone, if you please place your cell phones on silent. If you have to take a call, please step outside. This time, I'd like to bring the Indian Trail Town Council meeting for Tuesday, October 12, 2021, to order. If everyone can please rise for a Pledge of Allegiance. Please. Be seated. This time, Mr. Town Manager, are there any additions or deletions? Uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, Board. We do request that we delete item 10A, solid waste vendor selection from tonight's agenda. Council, any opposition? Nope. I need a motion. So moved. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion. All in favor, by show of hands. Record show, all were unanimous. Any other additions and deletions by the council? If not, I'll need a motion to approve so the moved. amended agenda, please. So moved. Gotcha, Marcus. 
Ms. McIntyre has made the motion to approve by show of hands. All in favor? The mandated agenda is approved. That brings us to public comments. Okay, there are no public comments, so I will open and close the public comments. That brings you to Captain James. You're going to keep the trend going? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, laid your packets before you for the numbers from last month. Ironically, the uh, we had the same number of reportable incidents last month as we did in August. Um, you had some sway somewhat back and forth, but we're still maintaining, uh, trying to keep those numbers low. 346 business checks last month, uh, 3,144 pre preventative patrols, uh, 96 traffic crashes. Uh, which is the first month in a while we've been under 100. So we're trending down, uh, which is, is good, especially during a summer month. Uh, I think our, our traffic grant guys, those two guys, uh, 298 traffic stops last month, 107 warnings, and then 476 uh, traffic and criminal charges uh, between those two. A uh, couple things I'd like, if, you, if I may, uh, I'd like to express a sincere gratitude to the community members that participated in the adopt a cop program over the weekend i i don't know what to say and it's just um, the outpouring of love uh, to my guys was unbelievable and the uh, i don't i can't for me and from everybody in my division i'd like to say thank you um also i'd like to ask you that you remember uh chase's anniversary was yesterday um, and continue to uh, offer those prayers out for his mama Linda and Miss Summer. Um, it doesn't realize it doesn't feel like it's been two years, but the uh, still missing. I know his mama and Miss Summer would uh, appreciate your support as well if you have a chance to say a prayer. One other thing I'd like to bring up is for the spectacular on the 22nd. Uh, we're going in with Hemby Bridge Fire Department, Bakers, Stallings, and the uh, Town of Indian Trail on something I think that Miss Wendy with Hemby Bridge Fire Department and Chase started several years ago, which was that uh, Heroes, Holiday Heroes campaign and collecting toys uh, for underprivileged children. Uh, on the 22nd at that spectacular, we'll start taking those donations and there'll be and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Abby. The, uh, I think there'll be uh, boxes at all the fire departments here at Town Hall, at my office. And then if you call us, we'll be glad to come pick them up kind of thing. And then everything will be concluded on the 5th at the tree lighting. And then all those will be delivered uh, to Monroe, um, to um, the Christmas Bureau on December the 7th. So the... Uh, I appreciate the community support. I know how much they they have really supported us, and I'd like to support this project with the fire departments in the town as well, and to really push that because I know my guys are really interested in it. And I don't have anything else for you, but I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have any. Just specifically, the age groups of toys. <clears throat> youngest to oldest. Uh, I would say youngest is no age. Any oldest? I would probably say teens, young teens. But Miss Wendy didn't specify on here okay. what they normally do. Any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Brings us to the consent agenda. If there's no any questions, we need a motion to approve, please. So moved. Make a motion. Mr. Heads made the motion by show of hands. All in favor? Let the record show it's unanimous. Council, as a reminder, if you would, please pull your microphones down so they can hear you on the recordings. Todd. Todd. Microphone. Pull it down. When the time comes. Well, That's better. Thank you. <laughs> that makes Abby happy. That brings us to public hearing for Moore Farm, phase three and four, annexation number one, six, three. And... I guess for more farm phase three and four CZ two zero two one zero one four nine ordinance number zero two one one zero one two dash three six six. 
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Our first public hearing for tonight, as the Mayor stated, was Moore Farm Phase 3 and 4. This request is for annexation and conditional rezoning for property off of Waxhaw Indian Trail Road. The request is to rezone um, 111.92 acres. Current zoning is Union County R4 and Master Plan Development, MPD. And the proposal is for the zoning to be changed to CZ Single Family District, SF5. The applicant is National Land Investment, LLC, and the intent is to construct 475 residential units. The current site's vacant and is a former tree farming field. This project proposes 289 single-family homes and 186 townhomes. Future land use shows low to medium residential and the chart below displays the surrounding land uses, which includes phase one and two of Moore Farm, as well as additional residential um, projects in Indian Trail, Union County Unincorporated, Weddington, and Wesley Chapel. The aerial map here displayed on the screen helps orient you to the subject property, which is backing up to Brandon Oaks, uh, excuse me, backing up to Heritage, uh, Brandon Oaks to the east, and Wellington Woods and Hunters Point to the west. This is a photo of the site looking north along Waxhaw Indian Trail Road. The project will be on both sides of the road. Existing zoning here you see is the Union County uh, R20 and a portion of that MPD. Future land use is a combination of low to medium density in this area. And this is the site plan. Um, includes 283 single family structures, 186 townhomes, 30% tree save, and each dwelling unit will have two car garage and at least space enough for two cars in the driveway. Architectural renderings show exterior portions of the building for single family. They've provided products for the townhomes with the first being a little different than the typical design. And the next is more of a traditional townhome product. Community meetings were held on August the 25th of this year. 13 citizens participated. Several participants were interested in the buffer and it was explained that a 25 foot wide buffer would remain and if any vegetation was missing, then it would be supplemented uh, to meet the UDO standards. Consistency statement. This development is located within the Moore Farm Village Plan. The redevelopment is consistent with future low to medium residential land use recommendations as stated in the town's comprehensive plan. The development is a continuation of the existing Moore Farm subdivision. The proposed plan is consistent with the comprehensive plan's goals of creating a wide range of quality housing options and expanding infrastructure. In summary, this request is consistent and promotes the goals of the comprehensive plan through land use and housing and infrastructure. It's a reasonable request. On September 21st, 2021, Planning Board voted unanimously to approve this request with an additional condition. This condition has been added to the proposed ordinance and is consented to in writing by the applicant and reads as, as follows. Upon consent of the property owner, the developer agrees to provide additional landscaping buffer on parcel 0711026A or 3113 Waxhaw Indian Trail Road to eliminate visible, uh, visible impacts of the development. Uh, staff has listed conditions if council chooses to go through those. Um, thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. The applicant's present and has a brief presentation before pub public comment is received. Thank you. Randy, I have a couple quick questions sure. that were also asked that are relevant to the public. What, where is phase one and two currently in the jurisdiction? Union County Own Incorporated. So what this was a project that was developed before the um, county and the municipalities got together on the donut hole and fringe conversation. Okay, it also borders Weddington, does it not? Or Wesley Chapel along the other side? Correct, okay, correct. It, 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 correct. 
uh, phase one and two are currently zoned for, or phase three and four are currently zoned in the county as? Um, R20 and a portion is MPD. Okay, and would you make that for the layman's terms so that people understand? Sure, master plan development. So that's just a portion of what one and two is uh, zoned through the county as it's developed. Okay, so what, how many homes per acre there? The R20 would be 20,000 square feet, which is approximately two per acre. And what are they requesting? They're requesting an SF5 zoning coming in at 4.24 dwelling units per acre. Okay, thank you for clarification. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Um, I have one question. Go ahead. Uh, it was stated that this was consistent with the comprehensive plan and the low and moderate density. How is that consistent? Um, so we look at um, the areas by villages, and what we want is if, if the area calls out to be low um, and medium density, then we want, we want a good mix of that in the area, and we see that already in the area, and this project just adds to that mix. And, um, Thank you. Make sure you speak up clearly so everyone can hear you. Uh, and uh, the um, fa the other two phases, they ha they don't have any townhomes, correct? They they do have townhomes in the other yeah. phases. Those are already under construction, so you can see those present today. Okay, so that phase one and two does have. Yes, sir. Okay, and so basically the applicant is asking us to annex in and basically do a little bit more density rezoning than the county has currently, correct? Phase one and two is a little less dense overall. Um, they don't have as many townhomes, so that would be correct. But you think, do you think these two phases are consistent with the other two phases though, kind of, as a development? Fairly consistent. I mean, there's more, there's more townhomes, so that's why you see a little bit higher density, but it's definitely consistent with what, what the overall plan of the area calls for. And what was the, I know you, I think I read where we sent out three notices to people in the area. What was the feedback on those? If you could kind of summarize or if you know. Sure. So um, we, the first notice was for the community meeting. Um, that's where 13 residents attended. Uh, there was, uh, honestly, there was a lot more conversations, questions. They were very interested in the buffer. Um, not so much just straight up opposition. Um, so to speak, and then um, planning board didn't have quite as many attendees because I think that the developer had done a good job of working through some of those requests. Um, and some of the conversations were just helping get, there were a couple of people over in the um, Hunter's Point area here and um, really helping them to see that there's, um, you know, 900 foot of mature trees and a floodplain and um, instead of them thinking that they would be able to visibly see it. So um, some, some of that clarified and we didn't see quite as much for planning board. So we, so we feel like most of their concerns were addressed and, and met? Definitely, definitely once planning board was complete for sure. The, um, the one resident that the condition was added for, um, she seemed satisfied during planning board um, in, in my opinion. I noticed the planning board was unanimous on this. and That's correct. My, I generally like annexations, but I got a little concerned when I went to my handy-dandy, you know, chart y'all put together for us. And I was a little concerned because when we do annexation, and, and it's good that we've worked a lot better with the county, but usually it's kind of like we're approving annexation sometimes to kind of keep the county from approving a higher density, say like the apartment complex beside Sun Valley Animal Hospital that the county approved that's not in here. So... You know, so I'm very wary of, you know, the developer leaves here and then goes to the county and then they may want, might want, might want more townhomes. So, so my concern was a little bit that they were kind of coming to us asking higher density when usually it seems like it's the opposite, that, you know, we want lower density than the county would approve. So that was my concern there is if they were kind of overloading the last two phases in comparison to the first two phases kind of taking advantage of the situation a little bit was what I was thinking. And so that's kind of my concern. I didn't know if they'd like to maybe scale back some of the townhomes, but, um, you know, but I do like annexation, but it, that's kind of where I'm at. And um, they do look like a nice product, but it is a big development, you know, overall. Uh, in all the phases, this would be over 700 units, correct? With all the phases together? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that's bigger than Brandon Oates, correct? Was Brandon Oates 600, 700, 800? Hmm. 
somewhere in there. So I thought yeah. it was in the ninth. Uh, I think Brandon Oaks is larger. Larger, yeah, a little larger. bit. So yeah. yeah, so it's a big development. Okay. All right. Any That's other all questions? I've got. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I, no. No. Oh, okay. I thought you did. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. All right. Um, they had a quick presentation. Okay, while she's queuing up a video slide, uh, first of all, thank you, Brandy, for your presentation and for your assistance and your guidance through this annexation and, and zoning process. Uh, Mayor Alvarez, members of the council, good evening. My name is John Ross. Uh, I live at 3501 Lake Park Road in the village of Lake Park with an Indian Trail mailing address. Um, tonight with me uh, are Mr. Mel Graham with National Land Investments, Mr. Mark Kime, he's the design team leader uh, with Land Design. Mr. Wesley Henson, Henson Falk Attorneys, uh, and to my left, Mr. Randy Goddard. He is the traffic engineer with Design Resource Group. We've all been instrumental in pulling these, uh, these thoughts and these facts and this presentation together. Uh, as Ms. Dees has described, we're here tonight with a petition to annex and to rezone approximately 112 acres of property that is currently located in the county. Uh, the project will be a continuation of the existing age-targeted active adult Moore Farm community, which is under construction. Mr. Graham and I worked together over the last few years on the design and permitting of the phases one and two of the Moore Farm community. This is a project that we're both very proud of, uh, and we look forward to bringing the future phases of Moore Farm into the town of Indian Trail. Um, I'm going to sidestep here for just one moment, I think, just for a moment of clarification. Uh, the question was asked about why in the county versus in the town. When the first two phases of Moore Farm were developed, it was not contiguous with the town of Indian Trail, so it would have been a satellite annex annexation uh, generally frowned upon. So we did not pursue annexing the first two phases into the town. Now, uh, it, is condition it is contiguous. Phases three and four are contiguous with the town limits of the town of Indian Trail, so it does make sense. Uh, and as Ms. Dees points out, it does uh, work to close in the donut holes, which seems to be the common goal between some of the municipalities. Um, before we get into the details uh, of, and the merits of what we propose to do, uh, let us take just a few moments and present a video that shows what we are currently doing on phases one and two. So this is the entrance in off Waxhaw Indian Trail Road into phase one. We'll iterate it again in a moment, but there's a large pecan grove that was reserved to the right. And these are, these are actual homes. These are the footprints. These are the architectural rend or elevations. Uh, this is the existing product. This is the streetscape. If you ride through there today, this is what, uh, what the quality is that you see. And again, this was developed under county zoning master plan development. So it was one where it did uh, bring together a town home and a single family product. And this will show in just a moment, uh, there's a water course going through the site. This is the amenity area, and I'll uh, elaborate a little bit more on that in a moment. Uh, but this amenity area, area is in phase two of the project. There's the clubhouse and the swimming pool that you just saw. These are designed and uh, under permit as part of phase two, that's not part of the petition that we're requesting tonight, uh, but this is sized to serve the entire community. Some pretty expansive seating areas around the pool. And you see in the background there, attached single family. Those are the townhomes that are approved and under construction in phase one. Uh, you'll see that we are building some of those very same products in phases three and four. And that's the pecan grove again in the background of the sign that I was referring to a moment ago. So with that, please allow me to just give a, a quick overview of phases three and four of Moore Farm. That is what we have accomplished in phases one and two. Uh, and let me present phases three and four. Okay, orientation, I presume everybody's pretty familiar with where we are, uh, but this shows proximity to downtown Indian Trail and then the commercial nodes of Austin Village and Sun Valley Commons. Just a contextual orientation. And this is the master plan that's been developed. 
what you see down on the lower portions of the screen, the grade back area, those are the existing phases, phase one and phase two. Uh, phase three being to the north of what's existing and phase four being to the west of Waxhaw Indian Trail Road. Uh, what you'll notice on here, there were three connector points out of phase one, out of phase one, two out of phase two, uh, for what is being proposed as phase three, uh, and then two points of access off Waxhaw Indian Trail. And I will point on here for the, for the people behind me. Uh, three points of access into phase three, and two points of access into phase four off Waxhaw Indian Trail Road. Um, there is Price Mill Creek to the east. That's the squiggly line to the right hand of your screen. Uh, and this is Davis Mine Creek. It's not, Davis Mine is not on our property, but it's a floodplain, a fairly large floodplain uh, to the south and west of phase four. Uh, the conditions of the site, there's, it's a, an old tree farm. Uh, there are a large number of mature majestic trees, uh, particularly within the floodplain area uh, and along the creeks that exist. Uh, the site has valleys, has uh, uh, creeks, uh, has some pretty nice topography on the site. Uh, and that's why you see so many little blue water quality features uh, that will allow us to meet the town uh, and the state water quality regulations. What is unique about this site is the open space and green space. This is showing, again, phase one and two are a little bit faded back uh, with phases three and four being a little bit bolder. Uh, phase, proposes phase three and four have 33 acres of common open space, and that equates to 30% of the total project area in those two phasers, phases. When we combine that with the earlier phases of the community, the total project common open space is 91 acres and that equates to 40% of the total project area. Again, Price Mill to the east, Davis Mine to the west, uh, floodplain areas, majestic and mature hardwoods, those remain undisturbed and untouched. Uh, as Brandy pointed out, the developer has uh, also agreed to, uh, or uh, suggested a 25 foot buffer around the site. Uh, again, retaining mature hardwoods, mature growth where we can, uh, supplementing to meet buffer regulations if we cannot. Talk just a moment about the amenities. Again, there's um, the clubhouse in the pool area. That includes expensive sitting areas, playground, uh, activity spaces. We'll also include a multi-court or multi-use court for basketball and pickleball. Uh, sidewalks on both sides of the roads, and then a, an extensive, uh, extensive set of trails uh, where we do not have sidewalks for interconnection between the phases. Um, also, we are reserving right of way on the far east side uh, for what is the future Carolina Thread Trail, dedicating right of way for the construction of that as we did uh, in the earlier phases of the Moore Farm project. And then just again, a few slides. Some of these are still shots from what you've already seen, uh, the signage. Uh, again, this is the Phase one entrance, phase three is to the left, phase three other access points are further to the left, and the area that you see uh, to the bottom right of the screen, that is the phase four side of the project. Existing street views, architectural integrity that's been established in the earlier phases, uh, and that's carried through to the typical homes that you will see in phase three and phase four as well. These are all the single family detached homes. Uh, and again, these are age targeted, not age restricted, but age targeted, typically master bedrooms down. Uh, some do have two stories, some are single story. Uh, and these are the townhomes that again are approved and under construction in the earlier phases. Uh, this is the same product that we will be providing in the future phases. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, we're gonna introduce this product as well. Uh, a little more architectural uh, relief to it. Um, while it's an active adult community, not every active adult, myself included, wants to live on a, on a one-story house, same footprint. You can get uh, certainly more square footage on multiple stories. Uh, so this is a product that uh, the market says we should bring forward, and that's what we're doing. Again, the clubhouse. And an expensive sitting area. On August the 25th, we presented the materials that you have before you tonight to the two community meetings. 
Uh, several discussion points from those meetings are included in your packets. Uh, we do believe that the discussions were open and were well received. Um, as with any project uh, that goes through the development process, there are a few common discussion themes. One of those is traffic. Um, regarding traffic, the site does meet the threshold for a traffic <coughs> impact analysis according to the town standards. The development team retained the services of, of, uh, of the design resource group. Uh, the scoping was submitted and approved by the town and by, the, uh, by DOT. The TIA is complete and has been approved at the state level through the Congestion Management Office of DOT. Uh, the local, uh, local division of the office had asked for a couple additional study points, which were beyond, beyond the approved scope, uh, and that has been completed and also provided to DOT for their final approval. Uh, that did have no, no effect at all on what the recommendations were. There was the, the additional study points had no impact to uh, the proposed improvements. The developer is committed to the improvements as required by the traffic impact analysis. A school study has been completed. That's also in your packets as well. After the full build out of this project, which we anticipate will be on the order of eight to 10 years, uh, the study shows that there will be 96 additional children divided between the elementary, middle, and high schools. Uh, the county has been provided this data for the project for their planning purposes. We have con conducted and completed floodplain and environmental studies. We conducted a wetlands and endangered species study. Uh, plans were created in a manner and adjusted in a manner to avoid wetland and stream impacts. There is no disturbance to the floodplain areas and there are no endangered species on the property. Another concern that we often hear is parking and in particular on street parking that may interfere with emergency response vehicles. As outlined in the staff report, we exceed the town's parking requirement. Each home and each town home will have a two car garage and a driveway to accommodate a minimum of two cars. What that means is that we exceed the parking requirements in the townhome areas by 60%, and we exceed the parking requirements in the single family areas by 100%. We think that's significant. Beyond the community, community meetings, uh, we were forwarded information from a resident of Brandon Oaks. Uh, I had an email exchange with that person, uh, and as a result, we created this exhibit. Um, you may have to look on the screen behind you. I, don't, I can't illuminate what's on your screens. Uh, this is phase three of the Brandon Oaks community, the top image that you see here. This was the location of the resident that expressed a concern about impacts, audio or visual impacts that may occur to the Brandon Oaks. And he was speaking on behalf of many in the Brandon Oaks community. So we cut a cross section right along this line. And that's what you see at the bottom of the page. This was the house of the resident. This is the closest town home in the community in phase three of the community. And what you see, a uh, crossing of Price Mill Creek, another crossing of the tributary of Price Mill Creek, uh, and just under a thousand feet of mature hardwoods and topographic conditions that remain. Uh, so uh, when that was presented, there was no further, I opened up or asked for any additional questions and, and received nothing more on that. Uh, and again, as my understanding was that person was representing some of the Brandon Oaks neighbors. Um, Iterating a bit more on the traffic impact analysis. This is the, uh, the nodes that were studied based on the approved scoping document. Uh, you see, all, go back one, I'm sorry. You see all the green points. Uh, those are the intersection points. Um, our project being here, the roundabout uh, there, and Old Monroe Road and Waxhaw Union Trail at the top. Um, and this is the resultant <laughs> stick diagram. Um, what we are required to do and what we are committed to doing um, are intersection improvements at access points A, access point B. This is the frontage of the project, uh, turn lanes both sides in and out, an additional turn lane out of phase one and two of the project, um, and then a uh, off-site improvement basically creating a, a slip lane off Potter Road onto Waxhaw Indian Trail Road at the roundabout at Potter and Wesley Chapel. Uh, those are all detailed and again, um, Mr. Goddard is here. If there's any more detailed questions specific to the traffic impact analysis, I'll be glad to turn that over to him. Um, in your staff report, there are enumerated conditions that are recommended by the planning staff as a condition of this approval. Uh, our team is familiar with those conditions uh, and we do accept uh, and you have received signature that we accept the conditions uh, as outlined by the staff. Mr. Graham, did you have additional comments you'd like to add? Yeah, I'll wait for questions to come up. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, then at this, that point, I'll be glad to open it up for questions. Mr. Graham, sorry, question for you. It's a familiar last name. And yes, it is. Does, I do see a, re a resemblance. I know it's unrelated, but I do have to ask. I mean, I'm sorry. Yes, correct. Mr. Gra Mr. Frank and Graham, uh, or Mr. Billy Graham, yeah, members my, of your family, well, sir? Yes, my uncle. Your uncle? My uncle Billy. Okay, so yeah. I, I see that yeah. resemblance. That was yeah. my initial question. I'll let <laughs> others ask. Okay. Oh, well, right. That was definitely relevant. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I have to ask, right? <laughs> yeah, no, you have to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? I'm, if if I may, since I'm here, I, I'll, oh, sorry. Todd? No, thank you. Question? No question. David? Mike? Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I was going to just address uh, one of Todd's concerns about uh, density. And we realize that this project has some density, but every project is different. And the geographical conditions of most projects don't allow what this project is unique in allowing. If you noticed on the site plan, uh, do you have the color? Site plan handle, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Do the yeah, the one with the green space. The uh, the the entire eastern border of this property, the southern boundary of this property, and the western boundary of this property is all completely protected by existing huge streams and floodplain, and large large distances. We worked hand in hand with the Hunters Point neighborhood. I met the, uh, the, the actually took the HOA guys down there back in the winter when there were no leaves, worst case scenario, and we walked down in the woods and showed them that you can't see any of our project from their project alleviated their concerns because of the huge natural buffer that is being totally untouched. And, and the same on the south on phases one and two, and the same on the east from Brandon Oaks, as you just saw, uh, the only place that we attached or touch properties is on the northern side, and uh, so we've we addressed at the uh, planning board several neighbors that had concerns over those areas, and and have agreed to do additional buffering in addition to the 25 foot buffer and screening as needed. That's one of the conditions that's put upon us. But I'll say to address the density concerns, yes, this <coughs> is more dense than what we did in phases one and two, but it's the perfect scenario for, for proper planning because the density is all in that one pocket to the east would be to the what would be to the right of your screen. It's all pocketed in that one area. It's completely buffered, out of sight from anywhere anywhere from the streetscape, any other neighbors, any other neighborhoods. It's totally tucked back in and buffered, and uh, it's it's done extraordinarily well. I just want y'all to know that we're not some of these you know, greedy, typical developers that try to just cram stuff in for the sake of doing it. We don't do that. That's not, that's not how we operate. Um, some of you may be familiar with the Longview neighborhood over in Weddington. Uh, uh, Longview is, is, is my community. I developed it, still uh, own it and operate it. And it's the complete, you know, uh, you know, shows what real quality and what we're all about. We could have done 12, 1300 homes on that site. I chose to do 300 because that's what the market was and that was, is what the need was. And we uh, paid particular attention to the neighbors and anybody that was exposed, as I shared at the planning uh, board with uh, a resident that was here, and I think she's here tonight, who has concerns. I said, you know, we, are, we are very, very good at landscaping. We know how to hide. We know how to buffer. If you drive down Tom Short Road over at Longview, there are large homes right on the road, and you can drive up and down the highway. You cannot even see a home. Uh, that's what we're known for. I've done several high-quality projects in Weddington. Same thing, right on Ray Road. You may be familiar with uh, a project there on Ray Road just off of Providence uh, called High Clear. It's the uh, same thing. I committed to that town that we would hide it. We would make it go away. A very nice project, a gated community. We hit it. You drive past there today, and that was just four years ago. You can't see any one of the homes which are completely built out. So just wanted you all to know, we didn't take this lightly. We, we have put a lot of time, a lot of work, and we share the neighbor's concerns, and we go out of our way to properly buffer and to do things proper in a, in a, in a correct manner. Um, so if there's ever a scenario where some density is uh, is definitely a good place to do it. This is it, uh, and and you know this isn't again. This isn't being. This isn't a greedy developer request. It's just at the day's cost to do and implement a project of this size and of this scope. 
the costs have just completely soared unbelievably the last 24 months alone to pull this off. The infrastructure for the amenity that you saw that uh, John referred to, it has been increased uh, to handle these two new phases, three and four. Uh, it has been expanded uh, immensely to handle the project. The traffic, uh, the traffic requirements that we're agreeing to do and pay for are extensive. They help far more than just this one project. They help the entire community. It's, a, it's, a, it, it's many improvements that are being done that helps the whole Indian Trail area. So just wanted to share uh, some of the things that we you know, did not take lightly, and I'm addressing you know, your concern, Mr. Barber, um, about the density. We, we, we hear you loud and clear, and just wanted you to know we did not take it lightly and just throw some stuff on paper to hope to try to make it work. It, we, we think we did it in a very proper manner that actually makes a lot of sense and really works well for, for everyone. With minimal impact to schools, minimal impact to traffic, um, this is a is a our age targeted facility, and I would point out that to date uh, we've got phases one and two approved in the county about five years ago, and it, we're just about 110 or 15 homes into it. But out of those sales, 65 percent have been empty nesters, truly empty nesters. I've checked, I've confirmed the numbers. Um, the traffic study did not reflect any of that. The traffic study assumes worst case scenario. Uh, which will not be the case. Empty nesters don't travel. They don't have kids taking, going to school and make all the trips. They typically avoid traffic hours. Um, so 65% of this community so far has been truly, you know, age empty nester uh, customers. And that continues to be the market that we are addressing and shooting for. So I hope that, I just wanted to address some of your earlier comments on, on density concern. Well, you know, I was, interested in consistency you right. know, kind of from a phase one phase two and and it's not unusual for later phases in a project to get a little bit more dense uh, we've seen that in other neighborhoods yes, sir. in yes, the sir. area yeah so um and, it, and, and, the, and i was glad you went over the traffic what y'all were doing there uh because you know that's a big concern with people around here is yeah. you know that we have turn lanes and and things and uh you know we did a mm -hmm. annex another project in town we're across, based across the street, the county had approved all townhomes, so we were able to, you know, get the county to send us something, and we did a combination of townhomes and single-family homes. So, you know, so it is good that since I've been on council and we've got Mr. McLaurin here and things like that, that we've had a better relationship with the county in sending the things is. I mean, because if, if, you know, they're letting y'all come here, then they probably would approve this right. since it's another that's phase right. anyway. Yeah, yeah that's um, right. You know, so, I mean, you, you know, you address my concerns and it seems like a nice project, but, you know, I was just kind of really concerned if, if the, this phase was the only one that had townhomes. I'm like, why no. are we doing that? No, sir, but no. The other two Graham, phases you, have you, townhomes. You answered that real well and, right. and then y'all y'all addressed that. So, yeah, I, I appreciate it and, you know, and yeah, you, you, you got a great name there through your family and all that, that's for sure. And yeah. I've been to several Billy Graham events and things and so but other than that is what yeah I mean you, you know you address my concerns thank, thank you, you. Mm -hmm. well I, I learned some good lessons from my uncle a man has to earn his own reputation and you have to live up to it so uh, I got a great uncle but uh, we're here to you know do what we say and mean what we say and when we make promises and commitments we honor them and we do them we have a track record and a history with other towns that I think would tell you the same thank you yeah thank you Okay, at this time, Council, there's no public comments, but there are <clears throat> a few written comments that I'm going to read into record for public comment. To whom it may concern, we are writing in the hopes of conveying our personal and heartfelt wishes for our father and family legacy. We humbly ask you, ask for your approval and full support for the development of Moore Farm. The ideas for this, community, for, for this new community will continue the family name and privilege of living in such a beautiful portion of Union County. Our father, Dennis Austin Moore, was born and raised on this land. And like his father, he farmed this rich dirt until his retirement. He has resided on the property for over 82 years. The farm holds many precious memories for us. It has been meticulously cared for and held in the family for nearly 100 years. We grew up playing and strolling on the same trails as our dad, 
when he was a small boy. We finished the same pond, we fished the same pond that our grandparents fished, and we climbed the same pecan trees and fruit orchard, orchards that they planted. We spent our entire childhood in this county. We both went to Indian Trail Elementary School and finished our education at Sun Valley High School. We even continued at Wingate University. We share a love and thread of experiences from this quaint part of North Carolina. This farm and acreage is a rarity, and we would love to honor our family with the gift of their ever-living name. At this stage of life, our father has some health issues that require financial assistance. We need the income from this property to support the, his medical circumstances. He should have some financial peace in these later years. After decades of farming and paying taxes, this should now be a reflection of his contribution to the county. It took, del delib it took deliberate thought and thorough discussion to conclude that this was the most ideal plan of action to support his care. And it, it also ensures the continuous continuance of our family, entity, and interest. We have great confidence in Mel Graham and his ability to uphold the values and essence of such a magnificent area. Once again, we ask for your consideration and support for a true, of a true Union County family, Moore Farm. Much appreciated, Karen Moore Pruitt and Kenya Moore Rankin. That was in favor. To whom it concerns, my family and I recently moved back to Union County where I was born and raised. I attended Indian Trail Elementary, Sun Valley, Middle, and High. I now live along the northern property line of the proposed Moore Farm Phase Three project. I'm grateful for the opportunity to write you requesting that you do not rezone the 111 plus acres along Waxhaw Indian Trail Road. Like we discussed at the Zoom meeting in August and the planning department meeting on September 21st, there are many concerns of neighbors and those in the community of adding such a high density neighborhood to the area. We are asking the town of Indian Trail re require this property to be developed, developed in a more substantial, conscientious way, putting 475 homes with more than four units per acre, adding potential 3,000 to 4,000 cars to Waxhaw Indian Trail daily is an unnecessary taxing of our roads, schools, and infrastructure. Anyone from this area can attest to the fact that Waxhaw Indian Trail Road is a country road that cannot sustain much increased traffic. The neighborhood targets an older population and the developers emphasized that there would be roughly 65% empty nesters. However, that is based on buyers of the current completed homes and does not include assumptions for what will be the new three-story townhomes. In addition, this is not an age-restricted neighborhood, so these assumptions can change very quickly. These high density pro this this high-density project will significantly and negatively affect this area. Those of us directly adjacent to the property are grateful for the 25-foot undisturbed vegetation buffer that Mr. Graham has offered, as well as the additional green space agreed upon. We are hopeful that this will mitigate the noise and light pollution that a project of this size will create for our farms and homesteads. However, if the rezoning did not happen, larger homes on half-acre lots could be sold, helping not only to minimize those negative impacts, but also massive negative impacts on the roads, schools, sewer systems, etc., for our entire community. Keeping the zoning as it will benefit the current residents of Moore Farm and the surrounding area, and also make Union County and the town of Indian Trail an even more desirable place to live and work. Please reconsider and choose not to rezone the Moore Farm Phase 3 and 4 development. We gratefully, for your time and consideration, sincerely, Mary Spence and the Spence family. Opposition. Thank you for taking the time to hear what the residents of Moore Farm at Indian Trail have to say. My wife and I moved into Moore Farm under the assumption from the developer that Moore Farms would be only two -phase small a two-phase small community. Since July of 2020, the developer has already changed the plan more than once by adding 50-plus townhomes when there were originally supposed to be four in the whole neighborhood. With all the construction in Charlotte, is, it, it, in Charlotte it is nice to have an area that is not so overcrowded and developed. I'm a project manager for a geotechnical firm here in Charlotte. I understand that developers will promote phase three and four, but really it will end up being phases five, six, and so on. The developer has not been honest nor communicating with the residents of the neighborhood about the plans nor the size of the planned neighborhood. Indian Trail is growing at an exp exponential rate, and the schools 
cannot handle the increased amount of families into the area. Union County has already maxed out the infrastructure for water and sewer. I hope that the committee will weigh, it, weigh what we, the residents, want, given the developer has not been honest about the size or the plan for this neighborhood. Thank you. The Mubarak's. Opposed. My name is Jasmine, and I live in the Moore Farm community. I speak for many of us that live in the community that we would not like to see our neighborhood expanded two phases, two more phases to three and four. We enjoy the serene farmland and space that we have. Our schools are already crowded, and now we are pushed to the Indian Trail Sun Valley District, which was not our preferred. Please keep the neighborhood small so we can enjoy the property around us. Thank you. Jasmine Rosario, opposed. At this time, that is all. And uh, there were was it four against, one in favor. Council, uh, there's discussion, questions? If not, you have a motion sheet for um, approval or denial. I have a question, may. if I may. Yeah, of course. Uh, several people, or at least one person there, said that um, the developer said that that there wouldn't be any high density or no more. Do you have an answer for? Yes, I do I have an answer. Um, I'm a good friend is actually developing phases one and two. John and I did all the master planning and got it approved. And a friend is developing that, and I confirmed with him that is absolutely not correct. No conversation was ever had or any commitments were ever made. The opportunity to do this, what didn't exist five years ago, this, the, this is the other part of the Moore family. The first two phases were with a different part of the Moore family. These folks had no interest in putting it in the project at that time. So this opportunity just came available. So there's no scenario that the developer ever committed to anybody that vacant farmland would not be developed. Uh, it's just absolutely not factual. Another question. Explain, if you would, mm -hmm. uh, age targeted. Age targeted and uh, what, what the definition age, of age. Yeah, targeted. age targeted is 55 and over. That's that's not me. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Age targeted is 55 and over. That's the, and, and it's targeted by the design and the nature of the community. It's, it's targeted by the designs of the homes. A lot of master bedrooms down on the first floor, uh, although many age uh, active adults don't like bedrooms on the, the ground level. Some of them still prefer it on the second level. So that's why we have a broad mix of product. Uh, but historically, our, our marketing folks that do extensive studies don't miss these things by much and, it, and so far to date and we're 65% we're sales or are 55 and well above 55 which means they have no school age children at home and that's why our school study is so low that we're not impacting the schools so that is our target audience that's what we're continuing to build it's just an expansion of what we're doing um, including the townhouses some uh, some age uh, uh, adapt, uh, uh, I'd say active adult uh, folks like the townhouses for lack of maintenance. They don't want yards and they like, uh, it's just the market they go to. They know these are very well appointed. These are very high quality units. These are, are, are very, very well done inside. And, uh, but that's why we have such a mix of product. Uh, they're something that appeals to everybody. But the, the, the homes is just not geared towards your typical younger families. And neither is the price point. The price point, you know, is, is, is getting on up there. So age targeted really it means anybody it, can still move in the neighborhood. It, you, it you, means, you, don't, you don't have to be 55 or, 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 that's, that's, or over to yeah. move in there. You could be 25. Yeah. It's just, yeah. The houses are built but, as age targeted. Our, our, expenses, our, our experience though is David, most 25 or 30 year old couples don't want to be in a neighborhood with a bunch of gray hairs. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so typically, typically that doesn't happen. But yes, you're correct. That can that can happen. Age restricted, on the other hand, would be like a, you have to be. 55. You have to be 50. You absolutely have to be 55 right. or older. How, right. How much? How much are the houses that? That are all, that you're building now. What do they sell? They for? are well into the 300s and and now into the 400s. They're going to push into the four, 300s and 400s. And what are is that what you're building now? Now are these this, the houses that you're building? Cur that's the currently same? yes. It's going to be about the same thing. Yes, it'll be a continuation of the same. We have the, the two phases that are there. 
uh, it'll what you just saw before you is a proposal to carry those that same successful product right on into the to the next two phases. Yeah. And as Thank costs you. as costs continue to go up, prices continue to go up. It's uh, costs are just outrageous. Uh, but it, 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 that these people do um, demand high quality. All the bells and whistles, and uh, they're very very nice inside. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, you bet. Council, I just wanted to read. There was one more for from Miss Queen handed me. Good afternoon. My name is Ariana, and I am a current resident of Moore Farm. I would not like to see the proposal happen. The reason I moved to this area is to get away from all the hectic city life. I like my neighborhood. It is small and intimate. I also am afraid that if the proposal is approved, the school system will be overcrowded and our children will be affected. Thank you. Says Ariana. Okay. All right, Council. Any other questions? If not. No, I'll just make a comment um, before this is approved. Um, could you go back to the one strip or the one slide that shows the surrounding areas that's already developed right there? And then there was a comment that was made about the, uh, the green space. Um, is it true that there's more green space in the first phase one and two than there will be in three and four? There is uh, phases one and two have, uh, the, well, the percentages are fairly equal, but, but the whole project, the green space that you, can, do you have the green space slide, John? Can you go to that one? Yeah, it's That's actually next, a better one. one. Abby, if you would, next, yeah, yeah, there you go. That is reality. That's just not, a, you know, it's not some you know, fancy artist rendering. We did that to show you reality of the actual green space. It's actually 40% of the total combined project. In phase in phases one and two, the percentages were the what? John? Thirty-three acres. Thirty-three acres in phase three and four. Fifty-eight acres in phases one and two. And, and a lot and a lot of that is largely due to you know amount of flood flood plain that we have to work around. You know, each thing has its own geographical differences. Yep. So could you clearly tell me again phase one and two versus phase three and four? Not combined, but just, yes. and here's where I'm going. It seems like phase one and two was either approved in the county. Is that true? That's true. Okay, so here we come rushing to, to Indian Trail because Indian Trail has got an appetite to, for high development here to build anything for anybody. Why didn't you come to Indian Trail with the same density as you approached the county? Where's the fairness in that? The, the, the reason is simply, like I said before, the land is more conducive. It's better fit for it. And we were looking at it as a complete homogenized blended project, looking at it all together as one with a broad mix of, of product and tons of open space. I mean, probably more so than much less dense product, products. Actually, most projects don't have 40% open space regardless of their density. It just so happens that the property, the way it lays with the creeks and the streams and the natural buffers that were provided to protect all the residents and all the communities just laid out perfectly well to do that and to be able to carry the load of all the traffic improvements that are required of us to expand an amenity center that I dare say is probably second to none in the entire Indian Trail area and all the walking trails and to create an environment and a place like this for people to live, um, it costs a ton of money to do it. So it's, it's, it's just pure economics. Thank you. Um, Council, I, again, I, I believe we've got a lot in the pipeline already of townhomes and houses that we're not clamoring to to absolutely accept a project just because they're in front of us and they're going to make things nicer and better for everyone. Uh, again, this, it's too, too much density, it's, is in my opinion. I think it should have matched the other phases a little more so instead of um, dumping all those townhomes, especially in the back corner and trying to tuck them out of view. It's still the same strain on the infrastructure. It's still going to be the same amount of water. It's the same police, fire protection and all those things. Um, I just hope that you guys will really consider not voting for this. Uh, can, I, I don't believe you've closed the um, public comment. Could you do that formally, oh, the please? Oh, written comments, yeah, it's closed. Closed. Done. There's no more written comments. Todd, did you have something? Oh. How many acres are you asking us to annex? What was the total acreage? 111, right? 112. Oh, just close. Uh, just at 112. 112. Mm -hmm. Wow, you know. <clears throat> I 
That's only 12 of our uh, future public works facilities, right? Mm. <laughs> so. I, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't um, anything else. Mm. Mr. Ross, you mentioned at, the, at your start that one and two, if it was brought to the town to be annexed, it would have been a satellite annexation, meaning that it is not contiguous to the Indian Trail. There would be a buffer or some other piece unincorporated or something or some other town in between. Is that correct, sir, that statement you yeah, made? It would have been a satellite annexation, meaning nothing of this parcel touched the corporate limits of the town at that time. Okay. And, and, and that has changed with the development of the Heritage Project to the south. All right, but this one is now. It is, yes, it sir. It is. So that would be all in Indian Trail then. Right, and this, this project touches Brandon Oaks, phases one and two, you know, as it stood alone. This was never part of phase one and two. It did not touch any part of, of the town. Okay. So it could not have been recently annexed into the town. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if, if I could just for a minute, we had an email that came in from a Miss Stone, not necessarily related to the rezoning, but whether there would be any changes to Waxhaw Indian Trail Road as a result of that and any affordable housing. I don't know if the developer wants to comment on that or not, but just in the name of transparency, I wanted to let y'all know about that coming in. Was it an affordable housing question? It, it was twofold. It was one dealt with whether there would be any road changes to Waxhaw Indian Trail Road and whether there would be any accommodations for addressing affordable housing because of the cost of the real estate continues to come up, uh, continues to rise in the county. And That's so not a relevant question for I, this I didn't rezoning. Think so, the first I one wanted, is. Yeah, I wanted to pass it on okay. to you. The first one's relevant for this hearing. Right. The second one you can address. That's right. Back to her. May I, I then yes. respond to the traffic question? Yes, there are improvements to be made to Waxhaw and Trail Road. Abby, are you still controlling that? Um, I can? Okay, thank you so much. Sorry, we'll have to get through a few here, but bear with me. So again, the, the stick guy diagram shows, um, and I can only highlight it up on the up on the screen behind you. So this is access A. This is the existing access into phase one, phase two of Moore Farm. Um, we will be adding a 100 foot right turn lane coming out of Moore Farm. We'll be adding a 100 foot storage lane right turn into Moore Farm. As phase four comes online, we'll be adding a 100 foot left turn lane, a 100 foot right turn lane at that access point, uh, 100 foot storage and left turn into access B, 100 foot storage and left turn out, a right turn out, and on Waxhaw Indian Trail Road, another 100 uh, foot storage left turn lane there. So one, two, three additional laneage uh, widening on Waxhaw Indian Trail Road at the access points. So the, the answer is yes, there will be substantial improvement made to Waxhaw Indian Trail across the frontage of the property. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and you will address that second one for her? Yes, sir, I will. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, if there's no further questions, you have a motion sheet, Council. I'll go ahead and make a motion. You want to put them up on the screen, Abby? Or is there nothing to put up on the screen? Okay. Right. Um, we'll make a motion to adopt the annexation ordinance one number 163. Ms. McIntyre has made the motion to adopt the annexation ordinance number 163 by show of hands, Council. All, all in favor? Opposed? Let the record show all were in favor. Would Council Member Morse opposing? Motion passes four to one. See, now I'm making motions. I'll make the second one. I'll make a motion for the consistency findings to adopt the statement of consistency as read into the record for CZ2021-0149 by staff on October 12, 2021. As consistent? Yeah, to adopt. Uh, yeah, you just said consi as consistent or not consistent. Yeah, to adopt the statement of okay. consistency. Okay, yeah. gotcha, sorry. The accent. Sorry, right? I'm still clogged. It's the accent. No, it's my, it's my ears today, Marcus. It's not your fault. I've gotten used to your accent. <laughs> Mr. McIntyre isn't... It, it, I made a motion. He made a motion I, I to adopt the consistency bit. findings. 
So you got me all <laughs> twisted. Into record as consistent. A show of hands, all in favor. Opposed? The record show, all were in favor. It was Mr. Morse opposing. Can, that passes four to one. I apologize for not hearing you correctly and then it's okay, sir. It's stuttering okay. to get it out. You're forgiven. Um, I'll make a motion for the con conditional rezoning request to approve ordinance number 021, sorry, 0211012-366 for rezoning request CZ2021-0149. Mr. McIntyre. I'm, I'm sorry. Go. And the additional conditions that were agreed to by the applicant in writing at the time of the planning board meeting. Got that right, Karen? Thank you, that's correct. That's it, it's, it's within the ordinance, you just need to approve the ordinance. All right, well good. So okay. may I made it? Okay. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion to approve the rezoning request. All in favor by show of hands. Opposed? Let the record show all are in favor with Mr. Morse opposing. Rezoning is approved four to one. That brings us to item C, public hearings, ZT amendment, civic group temporary signage. ZT 2021-0187, ordinance number 0211-012-367. Good evening once again. Uh, our, our last public hearing tonight is quickly for a text amendment of our unified development ordinance, section 970. 060 special event temporary signage uh, before you on the screen outlined in red um, are the changes applicable to this request and include longer duration for events that are held over a longer period of time also eliminates the off-premise issue for civic organizations and this amendment also identifies civic organizations as follows any local service club veterans post fraternal society or association operated exclusively for educational or charitable purposes and the net earnings of which are devoted exclusively to charitable educational recreational or social welfare purposes once again thank you for your time and i'll be glad to answer any questions you may have this was the um previously approved changes by the council correct correct okay council any questions there was nobody, no one for public comments. I will close the public comments. Absolutely. Can I just ask one quick question? The 60 days is just is cumulative, right? 60 days. No shalls, no sign shall be erected for a period of 60 days per calendar year. It's cumulative, right? So Correct. you can go for 14, 14, as long as you don't exceed. Okay. Correct. That's In good. one year. Yeah. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Good question. Uh, if there's no further questions, we'll need a motion. I'll make a mo I'll, I'm on a roll. I'm just going to make a motion. <laughs> So, um, Civic Group Temporary Signage Ordinance um, to approve Ordinance 0211012-367 for petition ZT2021-0187 as presented. Ms. McIntyre has made the motion to approve the requested action. By show of hands, all in favor. Let the record show, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. That brings us to new business. Indian Trail Park Water Improvements Project Award recommended. I'm not Todd Hunsinger, as you probably figured out. Todd should be coming in in just a minute. But if the board is willing, we'll go ahead and take care of the item below that on the sheriff's office. Just That'll have a little time. We'll I'll be fine, yep. I'm sorry? That's, That's fine. Good. All right, basically, we have a request from the Union County Sheriff's Office to purchase two pieces of equipment totaling $37,324.37. I know Captain James has spoke about the live fingerprint scanner before. Uh, that would be one item, and it would allow folks that need to have their fingerprint scanned instead of going all the way in to uh, wing it, could do it right here to Indian Trail, and we can make it more of a full-service facility. Uh, the other item is $16,429.37 for a specialty patrol rescue vehicle. As we start to get more greenways, as we start to get more events, this becomes very handy, particularly if someone has a medical emergency where you can't get an ambulance in 
and you use this rescue vehicle to, to be able to, to get people and, and pull them out of whatever need they have. Um, if only thing I'm looking for tonight, we recommend you do approve it. If we get the authorization to purchase, we'll bring back a budget amendment at your next meeting and any sort of lease adjustment or anything like that. Captain James may have some questions or comments. I'll be glad to answer anything for you. you may have questions about anything. Anyone? Yes, sir. Uh, what's the current need right now for a fingerprinting machine? Not in just general, but how many people from Indian Trail are headed down that are, are that are put out and have to go down to the sheriff's department currently? I can't give you a specific number, but the population between Waxhaw to North Indian Trail um, and the amount of gun permits that I think that's what you're asking me. How many gun permits we're issuing from up here? I can't give you a specific number, but what I can tell you is that, that we're about right at 90 days behind currently there. And I, I know that I can tell you from personal experience that that high number is not coming from that side of the county, if that makes sense, just because of the density and population. You mentioned Waxhaw to Indian Trail, but, right. we're, but we're asking for Indian Trail to fund this. So I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little bit torn there because the county generally funds the county, county things and Indian Trail. Right. Well, we do Indian Trail. Right. Um, and I, I just didn't want to set a precedence that we're getting into some waters here where we're supporting Mineral Springs, Waxhaw, when they're not being asked maybe to do the same thing or contribute as well. Well, constantly we work, try to work hand in hand with all these communities. Uh, primarily be used for Indian Trail mm -hmm. and be opened up for Indian Trail, but it'd be ultimately turning our office into a more full service office. Just like, you know, the county office in Wingate, our main office, services the entire county. This will be open to the entire county, but it's primarily to assist the Indian Trail residents because that's where this office is housed. If that makes sense. It does. And, and I'm trying to weigh, you know, benefiting Indian Trail and other residents installings in the county, but not take away the resources of an Indian Trail um, sheriff's deputy servicing those folks versus servicing Indian Trail. So I, take, I'm, I'm just, you know, it asking take these away questions. A deputy. That, this was one of the reasons for funding the full time admin position. Mm -hmm. The you know, the county still gives me that part time position as well. They'll be printing two days a week which would be on Thursdays and Fridays. That way I can have both of them there. So I don't have one, one female, I don't like to have one female with a lot of traffic in and out by herself and mm -hmm. trying to fingerprint and run that front, front office. So that's, that's kind of the way we're setting it up right now and thinking, you know, just kind of thinking ahead to how we would do it. But the, uh, is for, so they're printing those two days a week and so I've got staff there to cover that. They're not covered by our sworn officer. They won't be doing that. That's what that admin staff's for. Thanks for clearing those questions that I had on that. Okay. Uh, the um, the specialty vehicle. Right. What is, what is that? Is that like a Polaris or? A it is the base machine is a Polaris. Um, the uh, it's a side by side enclosed side by side. Um, and you've seen us. I've I've used during special events, the side-by-side -side John Deere. Yeah. This one is a four-seater, and the way it's set up, the, the base vehicle will come from a manufacturer, but we are actually upfitting almost right at $6,000 in an upfit to the trunk to be able to haul a Stokes basket, a backboard, transport a patient, transport gear materials, and I can be perfectly honest with you and tell you how this conversation started. I've really pushed the dual sport program and the trails, the, the dual sport, the motorcycles, mm -hmm. the off-road motorcycles. My guys love to, to get out there, especially in some of the subdivisions over toward Brandon Oaks, Bonterra with the number of complaints we've had about property being torn up, the trails being torn up, and, and the amount of green space that we've got. Mm -hmm. If I have one of those bikes go down, I don't have any way to get them out unless we walk them out, okay. literally. And this would be something for us as well as to support you know, fire an EMS because they currently don't have a vehicle either that could perform this, but it would also back us up with the number of vents that we use up here. This will be this will be a piece that can be not only for patrol purposes but across the community as a whole. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all I have. Any other questions? None from me, so. Okay, there's none. We'll need a motion. Oh, you have a question? No, I just. Uh, 
I think the, being the largest city in Union County is, I think it'd be a great convenience to have the fingerprint scanner here, you know, and it'd be a light drive, correct? Right. And you say you're going to do it two days a week? That's what we're projecting. It may be more than that. Okay. Uh, but, you know, okay. And of course, <clears throat> I think the vehicle's ne necessary. So that's all I got. Thank you. And didn't you say you're, what, 90 days behind right now? Currently. I, th I think it's needed. I went for the 90 days. It is 90. It is more. It is sometimes more than 90 days. Yeah. Going out to Wingate. I, I just got my permit a couple of weeks ago, and it took mm -hmm. it took a while. You you remember that, right? Yeah. Okay. We need a motion. I'll make a motion. I'm on a roll, man. I'm just gonna go. Go for it. Um, I'll make a, um item 11B IT US UCSO equipment needs. I'm I'm a big supporter of the sheriff's department and the job that they do in town. So I'm gonna make a motion to approve both of the following pieces of equipment requested by and for use by the ITUCSO. A, purchase of the live scan, fingerprint scanner in the amount of 20,829.34 cents. And B, the purchase of a specialty patrol rescue vehicle in the amount of $16,429.37. Okay, Mr. McIntyre has made the motion to approve both pieces of equipment. All in favor? By a show of hands, let the record show. That was approved unanimously. Captain James, yes, do I get half price on fingerprinting? <laughs> <laughs> I'll check on that. <laughs> no. Okay, Mr. Hunsinger, you're up. <laughs> Sorry about the mishap. Uh, must have had an old agenda. I thought we had an item for old business, so I stepped out. Anyway, um, I uh, wanted to come to you for approval. Uh, it's a notice of award. We went out and bid the, um, I'll give you a brief history again. Indian Trail Park, we did a stormwater project. We couldn't finish it. Had two small areas uh, that we could not put storm drain pipe in because the water main was in the way. And it was not, um, the county had, did go out and locate it and it wasn't where obviously it was located. So we got hit by a surprise. So I worked with the county to say, look, you know, um, we found out some of the sexes of the water mains uh, was substandard and so you know my feelings were they should help contribute to this and so we went back and forth it took a while but we were there and uh, they decided they would contribute and so uh, we decided that the town would administer the project to, to get the, the uh, it done in a quicker process than the county could be able to do it so uh, it's kind of like the stalin's if example with the resurfacing we're, we're basically going to um, enter into an interlocal agreement uh, again we're going to administer project the, the county is going to inspect it and basically we'll work together when the invoices come to make sure uh, the, the contractor gets paid but we did um, did have uh, I think four or five bids and the lowest bid came out to be hundred and seventy eight thousand one hundred seventy two dollars and fifty cent and um, this will be fully funded by the county with with the exception is if it does go over the total price of the contract then the town will uh, add uh, supplement that cost uh, and that's what the interlocal agreement will state but that will be executed and the contract obviously won't be executed until everything's uh, completed on that so i just need your approval to move forward with the project any questions do we need to make a motion or yeah. is it consent? it's a motion my apologies. Oh. I wouldn't mind making a motion. Go right ahead. Yeah, yeah I'd like to make a motion to um, to approve entering a interlocal agreement with the Union County for a service con a sewer contract in the amount of one hundred seventy eight thousand one seventy two fifty. Okay, Mr. Morris has made the approval. Made the motion. All in favor? By show of hands. Just what well, let's just just to be clear. Yeah, this is actually this is, a motion for the award of the contract, right? Right, the mm -hmm. award of the contract. Yeah. Award of the Indian Trail Park water improvements contract. Okay. So look, 11A. Sure. Yep. The Indi um let me restart that. I'd like to make a motion to approve 11A Indian Trail Park water improvements project in the amount of 178,172.20. 50. 50. 50. Sorry. Mr. Morris has rescinded the old one. Motion and entered into a more correct one. All in favor? By show of hands. The record show that was unanimous. Thank you, Mayor Council. Thank you, Todd. That brings us to the manager's report, Mr. McLaurin. 
Yes, sir. Just three quick items. One of them involves surface streets. So, Todd, if you'll stick around. We're getting ready to pave nine streets. Three of them are in Indian Trail Park, uh, Kennerly Drive, Shortcut Lane, Grover Moore Place. That's all part of the stormwater neighborhood improvement project we're doing. We're doing three in Brandon Oak, Summerston Lane, Waters Reach Lane, and Canewood Lane, and three in Kroll Park, Peace Drive, Sunnyside Circle, Kroll Lane. You heard Todd say earlier that we've just gotten this road condition report back, and as we identify more streets, we will bring that and make you aware of that. The other thing I want to mention is uh, Hayden did an excellent job just kind of bringing you up to speed on some of the things you had approved in um, Crooked Creek Park and where those are. I want to briefly talk about the Muni Code or our town ordinance update. Uh, we have been working on that for some time, and what it basically involves is cleaning up some old and language that's no longer applicable, removing some um, obsolete sta uh, statues and ordinances, and creating a user-free, uh, friendly version that can be used by the public and will be online. Uh, we are currently looking at it. We're sending it back to Municode. By the end of this month, they will do their thing, and then that you should get it in a couple months for your final review and um, approval. Um, a number of staff members have been involved. Karen's been involved. Kathy Queen has kind of shepherded that and done a, a great job with that, so I appreciate everybody's participation. The last thing I'll mention to you is in August, I passed my one-year anniversary and uh, part of that was we were having so much fun we forgot to do an evaluation. So I talked to the mayor the other day and uh, I will be sending out to you a simple evaluation uh, along with a couple of accomplishments hopefully that y'all will consider noteworthy along with some stuff for ICMA. And speaking I think with you Mr. Mayor, you have suggested that board members complete that and send that to Karen, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And uh, if you could do that over the next, before the next meeting, and uh, we'll have a closed session to discuss with the attorney. Okay. All right. I think that's all I have, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Alvarez, you're up. You know, not much to say. Captain James, as the uh, food gopher for the adopt -a cop on Saturday, just the looks and faces on the deputies as they picked up their baskets, especially Tomberlin. His was as big, of his, as, big as his patrol car. Um, kept, and they can't comprehend, or, they ha or some of them haven't, on how much this town really cares about their law enforcement and their deputies. And it, sh it showed. The pictures, they were more than, they took pictures with, with the families, with the children. They engaged with uh, Crystal and her students that were out there, it, it was a nice event to see and, and watch and from my perspective in between food runs. And uh, thank you for your service and everything all of you do. And uh, just a reminder, since Hayden probably didn't mention it, the spooktacular is happening before the next meeting on the 22nd. I don't remember the times. Um, just check your calendars and Abby will give the times. Six to nine. Six to nine. I uh, hope to see everyone there. Uh, it's a good meeting. Good to see everyone. Everyone stay healthy. Stay safe. And God bless. Mr. Oh, Barber. Wait, one, one other thing. Sorry. Council, since I, and it's good that I went first, I'd like you all to take a moment to wish Kathy Queen's son safe journeys as he left out for his... Uh, service with the United States Marine Corps this past weekend. Boot Thank today. Boot camp. That, well, it's more than boot camp for the Marines. Um, thank you for lending him to our country. And may God always look over him and he remain safe and we remain at peace. Mr. Barber. Congratulations to your son and happy birthday this past weekend. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Um, I just want to give a shout out to the adopt -a cop I was I saw him over there, and that was a great deal, and appreciate everything y'all do. 
I uh, want to remind everybody the uh, Lions Club Turkey Shoot, our biggest fundraiser uh, of the civic organization that we can now put a sign out for. Appreciate my colleagues <laughs> proving that. Um, <laughs> but the uh, Turkey Shoot is 1 p.m. every Saturday uh, until Thanksgiving Day, and then they have it Thanksgiving Day, 9 a.m. until noon. Uh, it's a half mile east of Hemby Bridge Elementary School and Indian Trail Fairview Road. $7 shoot for a turkey, $10 for a ham, and no, those are not live animals. Mm, so and we do actually shoot at targets, mm, you know. If you had to pass a sign of ordinance, I may have been the target. Mm, but uh, the but anyway, just, that's all I have, and hope everybody will come out to this Halloween spooktacular. Have a great day. Thank you. Mr. Head. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, it was a good meeting. Um, I wanted to just visit a minute about the solid waste. Um, it's been a very um, somewhat contentious um, process. Uh, and I, I, but I, I think, and it was postponed um, to get some more information, but I think we need to, to, uh, to look at um, what's actually involved and, and how we can potentially be a, a, a more professional. Um, there's been some comments made um, that um, about the, uh, and I'll, I'll just read them. Um, given the inappropriate nature of the last contract process and the unprofessional environment at Town Hall I walked into when I first got sworn in, I want to make sure the process is handled professionally and with integrity. Um, and the second was, how do we know price, for example, was given a low percentage score as to eliminate the lowest bid and allow another company more preferred by staff or a department head to come out of, on top? Um, I, for one, um, think that our, this, uh, our staff um, has done an excellent job. And I want to make sure that, yeah, it's, it's contentious because there's a lot going on. There's, there's you know, a, a lot of somewhat secrecy going on. But I, I just want to make sure that going forward, we just maintain our professionalism going forward. Um, that's, and that's all I'm asking. Um, and, you know, looking forward to, to getting this behind us because it's, it's, it's much needed and, and we need to make sure we make the right decisions. But let's don't be um, divisive uh, as, we, as we approach this. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. McIntyre. Thank you. Um, Ms. Quinn, Mr. Barber and the mayor stole the thunder, but I'm going to say to you, happy birthday, belated, of course, and i um, proud of you and your family and your son for serving this great country of ours. We do wish him the best. And uh, what do Marines say? Hoorah, right? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure what they say. I just... Um, he'll tell you. He'll tell you. He'll tell me when he gets back. They but, say but thank simplify. You. Simplify. All right. Sorry. I, I don't... I, unfortunately, I didn't serve, but... Um, it, it's good that you guys, you know, serve the country, so we do appreciate that, and we wish him the best. Thank you. Um, I want to just make a comment in regards to the, pro the presentation tonight in regards to the capital plan, um, Mr. McLaurin. Um, there were 16 projects on there, um, if my math serves me correct. There are nine of them that are funded. There are seven unfunded. Of the two of the seven that are unfunded, two of them are joined together, costing about $800,000, which is the... Um, the road that we want to look at there, one of them is the, the sort of the rainy day fund for any um, projects that we may have, uh, AC and so forth. So I'd like to implore this council to really get behind this particular, pro, um, this um, particular plan. It is non-binding in that it is just we approving a plan what we'd like to see. As monies come available based on what Mr. Walterich says, we can move things up or down the list but we do know where we, this current council and also the future councils, we do have an idea where capital outlays are, where we need to spend money, how we can go about planning better, saving better to get that done. So I'd like to, in my pers personal opinion, I'd like to see us get some of this or get this approved at the next meeting or not approved if the council so chooses. And that way we can have um, the town set forward. Um, where we want to go. This is really important as we do grow or new revenue streams come into the town. 
um, that we're able to really appropriate monies on roads and other infrastructure items that do benefit the residents of Indian Trail. So I implore the council to, to look at that as we go on there. Um, I'd also, I also feel very proud that the council is asking the, um, the engineering department to look at Old Mon, to look at from Old Monroe Road up in terms of Indian Trail Road right here, what the cost would be based on what Duke Energy is going to do with you know the um, relocation of some of the poles and the infrastructure. That really benefits some of the residents if we can do some of that. So therefore, we are forward thinking. We're not just reactionary, but we're visionary. We're seeing you know forward. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Appreciate the information from everybody that's here. And everybody drive home safe. Mr. Morris. Well, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that we approved another project, but I've been disappointed a lot in four years, so it's n nothing surprising necessarily. Um, and as far as the um, approving the CIP, maybe that maybe consideration ought to be finally getting the comprehensive plan before us or before a council, some council, and maybe put the CIP with it because it seems to me that they go hand in hand. And it also appears to me that I'm a lame duck, David Cohn's a lame duck, and so is Mike Head. So why don't these decisions be left to the new council that's coming in? They'll be serving four in two years, not, not on in our last month or two. Um, thank you, staff. Congratulations. Thank you, Captain, um, <clears throat> Captain James, for clearly explaining what those funds are for and how they're going to be used. I think it's very important that we know whether or not we like something or are in favor of something, but to ask the questions. Hope everyone has a blessed evening. Thank you. And Mr. Cohn. Kathy, congratulations to your son and, and to yourself and your family. Uh, and also happy birthday. Happy October birthday. I, I'd like to thank uh, Todd for something tonight. Todd, thank you. Uh, in my almost 66 years, I always thought turkey shoots you shot turkeys. <laughs> and uh, I've learned tonight you don't shoot them. I might actually go to a turkey shoot now. And, and uh, if you can't shoot, do you still get a turkey? I mean, if you, if you miss, just you so you pay? closest to the, the middle wind. Oh, great. I, I never knew a turkey. Are, do they shoot turkeys at some turkey shoots, or is that just? Probably years ago. Years ago. Okay. Well, thank you for telling me that. Uh, Captain James, thank you for uh, reminding us about Chase today, and thank you for the job that you do for the town and, and taking over in a hard time. You've done a wonderful job. And uh, Chase's uh, handprint is still on the town, and uh, God bless him and Miss Linda and family, and uh, we miss him uh, a lot. He, he, uh, uh, I still think of him every day, and I think of all the things that he did for the town, and with that, I'm going to close. Thank you. Does that everybody? Okay. I don't hate to think that I left David out again. <laughs> I just spoke. I do it all the time. I forgot already. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn. So move. Motion to adjourn. Ms. McIntyre has made a motion to adjourn by show of hands. Unanimous. Everybody have a wonderful evening. <laughs>